A wrestling promoter is accused of faking COVID tests. Plus, AEW Double or Nothing could be going even longer on Sunday. And what guarantee has Ric Flair made about his final match? It's all in the wrestling news right now. GCW promoter Brett Lauderdale has been accused of faking COVID tests. So this comes from screen grabs shared on Facebook and Twitter last night uh, from wrestler Dirty Ron McDonald. Now, he admitted in these uh, posts online to creating fake COVID-19 tests for wrestlers performing with GCW. And he says it was per the instruction of GCW owner Brett Lauderdale. Now, McDonald claims have made over 50 fake COVID tests for Lauderdale and GCW, among other allegations. Uh, he also includes claims that GCW encouraged independent talent who were booked with him to cancel other local bookings. Uh, a lot of stuff about money in some of these allegations as well, including West has been told to pay their own expenses and things like that. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff in here uh, of a quite a, a bit of nature, but the real takeaway from it is like this is potentially quite a serious, this is a serious allegation to make because creating and distributing COVID-19 tests uh, is, is construed in quite a few places around the world as fraud and potentially you could be prosecuted for it for obvious reasons. Now, uh, Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful put out a tweet saying, comment from GCW owner Brett Lauderdale on the fake COVID test accusations. I've referred this matter to my lawyer and as much as I'd like to comment, I've been advised not to. Now, there's been a few wrestlers coming forward, Andrew, since these allegations. Mm -hmm. and people uh, saying that what you're hearing isn't the case. Yeah, so obviously, as you just said, since the allegations, multiple GCW wrestlers, they've come forward saying that they uh, all took their own tests and submitted them independently. So Cole Radrick sharing conversations he had with Brett, who told him, and another wrestler they were bringing to a show to get COVID tests. Jordan Oliver said similar, saying GCW made him send test results to head GCW ref referees and was told not to attend if they tested positive. Tony Deppen saying that he actually missed GCW bookings because his test, whilst negative, didn't come back at the time. Now, it seems that like this may become more of a legal issue. It's one that we will keep across mm -hmm. at cultaholic.com. Uh, let's move to this Sunday, AEW Double or Nothing. Ooh. Andrew and Adam will be streaming live reactions, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks as if you're in for a long night. Well into... The day of Monday, it seems. I always think a night, a good night out, has gone well when you are when you're heading home as the sun's coming up. Oh, yeah, and the birds are tweeting. The bus drivers mm. are off to go and pick up the buses to start the <laughs> routes. Oh, yes, song, yes. Uh, and it looks as if Dynamite, Di oh, AEW, Double or Nothing could be a long one. So Tony Khan was on Sports Media with Richard Deitch. And uh, now AEW pay per views traditionally go a long time. They do. Yeah, they're long. They're long boys. Very long boys. Long boys like sausage dogs. <laughs> um, now. Double or Nothing is happening at the same time as an NBA playoffs game between Miami Heat and Boston Celtics. And Tony Khan is concerned that this will affect how the show gets put together because mm. he doesn't want to put the main event of Double or Nothing on whilst that crucial playoff game is still happening on ESPN. Of course. He actually compared this situation to when the Manny Pacquiao, Timothy Bradley boxing match was held back. Uh, until the basketball had ended that night. In a, in a sort of a similar way, I seem to remember the night of the debate between uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. There was a there was a SmackDown pay-per-view. Yes, there was. And they put the WWE title match on first. I can't remember. I, th I feel like it might have been a backlash or something. Yeah. I, I think it was the was it the Fatal Four where John Cena, AJ Styles, and I, other people. I think I think it was a triple threat. I, I, in my waters, oh, Moxley I'm thinking as well. Mo I think it might have been. The uh, artist sorry, Ambrose, <laughs> Ambrosia, Ambrosia, Devon Custard. <laughs> versus uh, sure John Cena versus AJ Styles. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And they put that on first. I remember, I remember so. that, and it was a good match as well. It was a very good match. Uh, so how, what does this mean for Sunday? Well, uh, the Celtics heat game gets underway on ES ESPN, I think at 8.40. Mm. Di uh, Double or Nothing starts at 8. Wow. So now you hope that the final won't go more than four hours. Um, Good hope. But uh, <laughs> basically, Khan is keeping it loose and fast. Mm. And potentially it might be a case of they don't put, they don't start the main event until the basketball match is finished. Yes. Uh, so there might be some stretching in the middle. You know how we mentioned uh, a few hours ago in the last video 
that Wardlow is looking to break that power bomb record. Oh my god, just have a long stretch. The whole pretty much like at least three three hours and fifty-nine minutes of that pay-per-view can just be Wardlow power bombing. <laughs> you just Jay. have him power bombing him in a different part of the venue. Yeah. So whenever you need to pad, you go, let's cut let's to cut Wardlow. To this. <laughs> That'd be quite good, actually. <laughs> it would it would be a good time ad by all. Uh, but we'll give you live reactions to what could potentially be uh, an incredibly long night of professional mm. wrestling from all elite wrestling uh, with live reactions from Andrew and Adam. You'll have what happened at with Jack the Jobber. We'll also have WTF moments from Ross Tweddle as well. And you'll have predictions later today as well. Ooh, oh, exciting. Prediction competition goes down. Ooh. I'll on fight you. On behalf of a fight, yeah. I'll undertake you. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, I've got him. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Ric Flair. Yes. Uh, he's promised a final match. He His has. last match, Ric Flair's last match is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and he's made a guarantee about his final match. <laughs> what has he said, Andrew? He says that he will be, well, he was asked, sorry. So in an interview with Tampa Bay Times, Flair was asked if he'd be doing some of his signature spots, such as the flip over the rope or something off the top. And Flair said, that's what I'm working on. It's just a timing issue. I'll guarantee I'll be coming off the top rope, whether it's the flip or not, I don't know. Jeez. He is, he's, he's putting everything into this final match, isn't he? The only time Ric Flair needs to be considering something off the top is at the barbers. <laughs> doesn't need to be thinking about it in a wrestling match right no, now. No, not right now. I mean, there's uh, obviously if you're gonna if you're gonna have a Ric Flair last match, you've got to do the best hit. So he's got to go up there for a top rope nothing. Is it his and last get match? Hoid off. Is, is it his last match? His, his first last match. His first last his, match. His latest last match. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so who's gonna be in this match with him? So we, when this whole thing got announced, uh, Ricky Steamboat mm -hmm. was a, was a name to be teaming with the Rock and Roll Express to, to face Flair and FTR. Now FTR still haven't confirmed nor denied the match. Uh, nor have the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, but uh, Ricky Steamboat has said, nah, this isn't for me. I don't want to you know, damage my reputation. Which I think is fair enough. Uh -huh. I think that's very fair enough. Um, Hulk Hogan was a name mentioned the other day, much to the delight of all. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do yet, brother, in terms of that one, because uh, that hasn't been confirmed by Hogan either. Mm -hmm. uh, but during a live online signing with the with High Spot Superstore, Scott Steiner was asked about Ric Flair's last match. Uh, he was asked about his friend, Ric Flair, to which Steiner went, he's no friend of mine. <laughs> so it's a good start. Uh, the subject of Flair's upcoming retirement match was brought up and it was kind of suggested sort of tongue-in-cheek, sarcastically. Oh, maybe Scott, you could you could be in Ric Flair's last match. <laughs> to which Scott basically said, I would kill him. Mm, and he absolutely would. He absolutely, without a doubt, he absolutely would as well. It would be quite a gruesome time. I would kill him, says Scott. So we don't know yet who, who it's going to be in. I, I don't think anyone thought for a second it would be Scott, but Scott's reaction is brought <laughs> a weird wry smile to our faces. I uh, want to keep an eye on. And we'll have more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Keys, keys. Love you, bye.